I'm moody? You're the one that's standing on the roof of my truck throwing pistachios at pigeons. That's messed up. Okay, talking about being stable in terms of your mood is kind of a delicate subject. So what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the research and purely the research with that. And when you look at the ketogenic diet, one of the things that I've noticed is that when I come off of keto, my mood seems to be a little bit wackier. It's harder for me to regulate. It's easier for me to get irritable and start throwing pistachios at pigeons. And you know, it's just, it just happens like that. And I talk to a lot of people that feel that way. And when you look at some of the research, it's pretty fascinating. There are some particular studies published in epilepsy, which I'll explain in just a minute. So we're gonna go into detail as to why when you come off of keto, sometimes you feel just a little bit irritable and moody, when you get back on, it feels like it stabilizes again. After this video, if you are doing keto, I would recommend you check out Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store. And if you're just trying to find cool foods to eat for keto, it's just a one-stop shop. It makes it all in one place. It's super convenient. They're a big sponsor and supporter on this channel. They have been for four or five years. I'm indebted to them. They make all this content possible, but also it's just convenient. Like you can sort by keto. So it's like going to a grocery store and having a specific aisle with everything that you want to be able to filter by. Like, okay, I want keto. I want canned foods, I want this, all the way down to what you want. So anyhow, there's a link down below that'll save you 25% off your first order, plus it'll get you a free gift, but you gotta use that link that's down below in the description. So big thank you to Thrive Market and thank you to you. So a lot of times when you're feeling like out of whack and irritable and stuff like that, it is a lack of inhibitory neurotransmitters, mainly in this case, gamma aminobutyric acid. You've probably heard of GABA before because people literally take GABA supplements. I don't necessarily recommend running out and doing that. I recommend supporting how your body can produce it and do what it needs to do. But GABA is sort of like a governor. I want you to think of it as like a regulator that kind of regulates your brain from going into like hyperdrive. And some of the ways that it's been described to me is your brain operates best when it's quiet, right? The regions of our brain sort of whisper to one another. Okay, neurons communicate quietly. It's not this loud, crazy environment like, you know, the movies make it out to be like the matrix in our brain. It's, it's just, it's a quieter whispering. And when things start to get loud, it's like, imagine a room, okay? You have people that are whispering and you know, it's like a, people are getting the job done, they're, get, they're communicating, effective communication. Then all of a sudden you get one guy that starts talking loud. You've all seen it at a restaurant, right? And then all of a sudden, the other guy next to him has to talk louder over him. And then I gotta talk loud. And everyone starts talking loud and then all of a sudden it's a loud restaurant. There's a place here locally called Lure Fish House that uh, just makes me think of that. Literally, you can't even hold a dang conversation. Point is, that is happening inside your brain, right? And GABA sort of regulates so that that doesn't go into overdrive. Now, when it comes down to ketones, this is where things get fascinating because there was a study that was published in the journal Epilepsia. This study found that ketones may end up restoring GABA by increasing what are called the activity of astrocytes. Now, astrocytes do a number of different things in the brain, and I'm not a neuroscientist, but I know enough to know that they can help with glucose transport to the neuron, okay? So that the neuron is able, basically able to send and have an effective action potential and be able to actually send the energy the way that it's supposed to so the brain can communicate. These astrocytes are also responsible for glutamate turning into glutamine, which allows the production of GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. So I've talked about in a lot of my videos, I've talked about glutamate before. Glutamate is a, like a natural part of the brain, like this natural sort of component that is in the brain. And like if you think about foods like monosodium glutamate, the reason that monosodium glutamate activates your brain and makes things taste better is because it's lighting up your brain and it's stimulating your brain. So glutamate's not a bad thing, but when we have too much of it and it's not able to convert into glutamine and it's not able to ultimately convert into gamma aminobutyric acid, then we lead this like excitatory response in the brain, which makes us, again, like Lure Fish House, where it's just really loud and obnoxious all the time. Sorry, Lure, you have good food, but it's loud there. What's interesting is there's another study that's published in Epilepsy that found that ketones actually support and possibly even enhance the whole glutamate to glutamine to gamma aminobutyric acid process. 
So you actually are increasing the rate at which GABA can convert into glutamine and produce more in the way of GABA. So that it could explain why you feel a little bit more like just stable. You feel less potentially moody when you're on keto. Now, am I saying that it's gonna fix everything and that people that have mood disorders should do it? No, that is not 100% not what I'm saying. I'm speaking from my own anecdotal experience and I'm hoping that you probably resonate with this and experience this too. Because when you look at these journals, it makes sense. Gamma aminobutyric acid is very important as an inhibitory neurotransmitter to make sure our brain doesn't go into hyperdrive. But then you also have to look at what's called network stability, which I've talked about in other videos, and I'll touch on this lightly. Okay, there is a study that was published in the journal PNAS that found that ketones improve network stability. Network stability is, again, coming right back to that room where people are able to effectively communicate in a quiet way. Regions of the brain are able to communicate with one another because it is quiet and there are enough inhibitory neurotransmitters to keep it from going overboard, but you also have a quiet whispering brain that allows the regions to communicate. So if you start noticing that you're a little bit out of whack, you feel like maybe you're just not as mentally sharp or you feel a little bit more irritable, you might wanna do a quick gut check on your ketone levels. Maybe take a break and go for a little bit of a fasting run, right? Where you just go for a day or two or do a 48 hour fast and try to drive those ketone levels up. If you start to notice that it stabilizes how you feel a little bit more, you know that that could potentially be the issue. If it doesn't affect it, then you know to look elsewhere. It all comes down to knowing what works for you and your own bio-individuality. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.